Hello. We're now moving on to a major new topic, investment appraisal. This is highly examinable and is at the core of financial management. The financial strategy contains three key decisions. The finance decision, where do we get our money from? The investment decision, what do we spend it on? And the dividend decision, do we return our money to our investors? or do we retain it to reinvest? During this part of the course we're focusing on the investment decision. What do we spend our money on? Let's start off by making a key assumption. We're going to assume that we're trying to maximize the wealth of the shareholders. There are many reasons why businesses may invest. To secure growth, to achieve a non-financial goal or social purpose, but we're going to assume the deciding factor behind do we go ahead or not is will it create wealth for the shareholders? If it will, let's go ahead. If it doesn't, let's not. There are four main investment appraisal techniques examinable. Two involve a process called discounting, building in the time value of money, and two do not. The two that don't involve discounting are the Accounting Rate of Return, or ARR, Payback Period, or PBP. The two that do involve discounting are Net Present Value, or NPV, and Internal Rate of Return, or IRR. We'll start off with the non-discounting techniques, then work through the ones that involve the time value of money. We'll then go on to develop net present value techniques for longer questions. So let's begin. The accounting rate of return is the percentage return a profit generates on average per year. It's also known as return on investment. The formula is as follows. Average annual profit from investment over initial or average investment where average investment equals initial outlay plus scrap value divided by two. Our examiner prefers to divide by average investment. This will be specified in the question. So, suppose for example a potential project involves an initial investment in machinery of $1.7 million and has these operating annual cash inflows. Year one, $300,000. Year two, $550,000. Year three, $600,000. And year four, $440,000. The machinery will be sold for scrap at the end of year four for $200,000. Let's calculate the accounting rate of return based on average investment. Remember the formula, average annual profit from investment over average investment times by 100 to give us a percentage. Average annual profit refers to accounting profit, so after depreciation. Total cash profits would be $300,000 plus $550,000 plus $600,000 plus $440,000 equals $1.89 million over the four years. Total depreciation would be the difference between initial cost and scrap value. So $1.7 million minus $200,000 is $1.5 million. So total profits after depreciation would be $1.89 million less $1.5 million depreciation is $390,000 or $390,000 divided by four is $97,500 per year. Average investment is initial outlay plus scrap value divided by two. So $1.7 million plus $200,000 divided by two is $950,000. Accounting rate of return is therefore $97,500 divided by $950,000 equals 0 0.10 or 10%. The whole point of appraising this opportunity is ultimately to see if we want to go ahead or not, or if it will make our shareholders wealthier. 
Accounting rate of return is often compared to the company's overall return on capital employed, which is a similar measure to accounting rate of return, just for the whole business. A key point here is that shareholders, the owners of the business, often look at return on capital employed to help them understand how well the business is doing. Return on capital employed is profit before interest and tax divided by capital employed. The rationale is this. If a project has a potential return higher than the current return on capital employed, taking it on may well therefore increase the return on capital employed. This is the main reason why it's common in practice. Accounting rate of return has several advantages as an investment appraisal technique. First of all, it's a percentage measure, and managers like percentage measures as they can easily be compared to alternatives. Secondly, it's completely in tune with something that shareholders look at anyway, return on capital employed. It makes perfect sense for management to manage return on capital employed by considering the accounting rate of return of individual projects. Finally, in contrast to payback period, which we'll come to later, accounting rate of return does consider the whole life of the project. However, there are several serious disadvantages associated with this investment appraisal technique. As a percentage measure, it does not give us a direct measure of the impact on shareholder wealth as a result of taking on the project. It doesn't take into account the time value of money, the fact that money received later is actually worth less than money received today. Don't worry, I'll come back to this concept later. If there's a small trickle of cash flows at the end of the project for a few years, this can unreasonably drive down the accounting rate of return measure. For example, if we had an extra 10 years where we earn $1 a year, this would drive down the average accounting profits. However, the last 10 years of cash flows are completely insignificant to the project and so should be ignored. As we've seen, there are several good reasons why accounting rate of return is a common measure for investment appraisal. However, be aware that it has several serious theoretical flaws. In the next video, we'll go on to look at payback period.